Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fifty Three once again with Floris the Fourteenth and Zakdoth, and this is the semifinals: Skazi Yaxdoth versus Magman Cube, along with the chat talking about Danny Schneidmesser's music, which I was using for the intermission because that's the guy who composed the music that was used in the game. It's a weird situation, but basically that's the music that the game has, so I assume it's okay. Anyway, the <laughs> I mean, Zach, you're, you, you're the one who told me it's okay. It, it, it's, so. it's under a, um, a Creative Commons license, which is what we It do is? Over. And we did actually contact him. Yes! yes! It's a Creative Commons yes! CC by SA. You need to cite him. And yeah, Wait, and CC by SA? Commons. Not NC. Uh, it, uh, um, NC, you're right. It's ah, CC Well, okay, by it's not a big NC. deal yet. I mean, it's not actually yeah. in the... I keep it out of the... Oh, I guess I keep this stuff in the... Yeah, I have to talk to him if I ever want to monetize these videos, I guess. Okay, that the the legal shenanigans of open source software, people. Don't get involved, <laughs> or do get involved. Get uh, involved, please. <laughs> Just bear in mind that what you make is kind of yours, so it gets a little bit wonky. Sometimes in some art situations. Assets. <laughs> art assets are yours, so be prepared if someone asks you individual questions, because when someone wants to get permission, they have to ask everybody involved, in theory. I actually just like public domain, all of my art assets. I don't even, you know, GPL. I just, like, Thank you, Zach. Oh, that's so many. But, but the thing <laughs> is that art assets it's... don't matter so much because video stuff isn't really checked for. Audio is. Audio is the thing that gets checked for when it comes to Twitch and YouTube copyright protection stuff. So that's it's easy to check. Yeah, it's easy to check. And the video itself, I mean, there's no cutscenes in this game, and there will be ultimately, but there aren't so far. And those that exist are going to be, they're going to be half code anyways. It's GPL, and that at that point, Gets a little bit weird for licensing. How you copyright that? I think it. I think that's equivalent to BYSA. Whatever. No, I mean it, SA, it, just it, BY. Sort of, yeah. Uh, you have to share. It. You have to. It. You have to share the content. Um, you wouldn't. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, oh, if you're making a video of the share game, like, you, it I doesn't. Share like meant they had no be... derivatives. Oh no, 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 that's right. There's a specific no derivatives clause. Yeah, BYSA. I was right in the first place. Yeah, but you you don't need to show your source code if you're making a video of. Thing, yeah, so it's fine. Oh, yeah, Anarchy, I do want to cast both semi games. I'm planning to cast both semi games. If the other semi games have started so far, please tell them to stop. Although, I'm pretty sure. Have they started? No, it looks like. No, they haven't started because the players of those games are currently spectating the game that we're going to be watching fairly soon once Skazi gets ready. And we are on Frozen Planet! I seriously can't say it any other way. <laughs> Cold. Yes, yes it is. Actually, it's not. It's like twenty-five degrees out here, or something. You can see that with the um with the smaller map, Magman and Cube are not going for an air start this time. Oh yeah, I should probably just actually show the game itself. So Magman, yeah, the bottom right, going for jump bots, while Cube is going for. Wait, seriously, for cloaky bots? Wow, Cube is playing normal on Frozen Planet. This is like what does he? This is what he. This is a comnab heaven. I. I think he's just doing a weird sort of double bluff thing. Like, I don't know, but... Cube... Okay, Yogg's not going for a slightly more typical spider factory as well. But Cube going for something normal on Frozen Planet of all maps. I I don't know what's happened. Skazi also going for cloaky bots, but that's that's fine. I just... I don't know. Um, he, he did this in the last tournament, didn't he? Where he, he didn't go Comnat once and still won. Yeah, I mean, he can't... He's Obviously, he's a legitimately good player. It's just that the f maybe I should stop expecting him to go calm nap because that's the second time I've been proven it's not wrong. Really, a thing? <laughs> it's apparently not really a thing. It was just such a big thing that one time where everyone was calling. Well, Scott in particular was calling for getting rid of calm nap entirely. Although, Mila, I did. I'm test still the up for that, but let's leave that discussion for now. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking about something I found with, with Auto War, but um, that's beside the point. I Yo so called what geez, Joksotov um has discovered the factories of the other players. Nobody knows what Skazi has picked yet. Nope. So for all they care if they know um Skazi's doing Skazi the comm might map. still be air. No, he could be, they don't know that and they aren't acting on that guess though. Neither player nope. M neither Magman nor Cube is going for anti air. Mag Cube actually started out with a warrior, which is really bizarre, although admittedly given the size of the map, not terribly surprising. It isn't so bad if you just send a warrior through a choke point heavy map it's, in the early game. You 
Instagip all red is you. It's not, <laughs> but it's something that doesn't really come up much. And going along the north side, going for a straight assault with the warrior, which against the spider bot factor makes a lot of sense. This is this is very strong. I like to do that this myself. Uh, warriors are extremely powerful. They are. And it's just that Sca Scazi has, has started with the gremlin as well. He's done the the gremlin yeah. probably as a uh, as a scout, but also maybe he expected the combat. So. Yeah, well, he was wise to do so, but yeah, now he's got the scout in. Although, unfortunately, he won't see the warrior. He won't see the calm push. I mean, I guess, no, it's not really like calm push. QB is just expanding out forward, but still, QB is doing a very aggressive expansion. And, oh, Magman getting their pyro stopped out by Yogg's Though, both pyro stopped out. My goodness, that is a lot of metal lost right there, thanks to those venoms. Oh, he might lose his commander in his base now. Oh, boy. Yeah, that commander is not safe. This Although, was QB foolish. He in had fleas, oh, he yeah. knew it was Sorry, coming. Sorry, and Yogg's Yeah, Yogg's is getting countered by this. And the factory can go down too. Nothing really can stop this. The glaives... No, not even glaives. These are fleas. So yeah, nothing can stop this. Nothing can stop this warrior now. It has basically won the game. It's it's that hill. Um, Because they're using ballistic projectiles, they get a range advantage by being on hill. They move down hill slightly faster as well. So you sort of can just power down that hill and destroy the base if it's... Especially yeah, if it has a um, commander. The commander jump commander. And Skazi, oh, yeah, getting stopped. Skazi still has their base up, but Yogg'Sothoth has nothing. They're about to lose that one. That one Weaver's it. And at this point, Skazi trying to move him to save in, and with a Venom, able to stop the warrior fairly late. And of course, QB expanding to the north side, while Magnan not expanding to the south. Magnan's still a little bit behind, but QB did buy them tons of time and probably enough to win outright. Though, Magman did lose a lot of metal there, so it could be an even trade, honestly, given the positioning. Skazi and Yogg's going for a counterattack, assuming, apparently, even positioning. Skazi has given Yogg his commander, because just to, there's something to use for micro. Oh, good. Yeah. That is, and to build stuff. <laughs> that is a good thing to do. Because Yogg's has the one weaver, and that will not build anything useful in time. It is actually going for but the caretaker, though. Let me... Express this uh, or say this again. Um, Jok Sotov uh, had fleas. He could have known. He should have seen that come. He knew there was a warrior coming, and he didn't know where the army was. And he still left his base and he kept making fleas. It was totally his fault. Yeah, it should not, I think he, should have not have he got distracted by the pyros in the middle. I mean, he was making great cost on them. He was feeling great about himself, and he just forgot that he's. About to I lose mean, his I base. was getting distracted by the pyros in the middle too, so I can't blame him. Yeah, that will, that will oh, I think you can blame. <laughs> I don't want to play, play blame, but okay. he made a big, big mistake. Yeah. I suppose it's more his responsibility than mine to track the right things to worry about for him in particular. Because he's the one who's actually playing and trying to win this in order to get the prize of kudos. He's lost his last Venom now, too, which is was really, really strong against those Pyros, so... Yeah, and that factory... Uh, oh, sh now Skaz oh, no, is, is switching to Zeus. And Yogstoth is... Oh, wait, we're on... What sharing... Setup is this because right now Yogg'Sothoth is reclaiming past the point of saturation. That's fine. It goes straight to. Skazi. Oh, good. Okay, I wasn't entirely Skazi sure. Skazi isn't. Uh, he's spending. He can uh, have a little bit more metal in his storage, but yeah, not for much longer. Right, because this is what excess goes over. Is that right? Cause, yep. Okay, because there's a lot of debate about the, what does. mode to use, whether it be communism or Exus goes over, or every man from or every person from themselves. Oh, come on, come on! And oh, Yogg's Yogg loses their commander again. Well, he loses Skazi's commander, which is that was a he was even morphing it to level two. It was and also I mean the, the thing is those glaives. Oh, it was just glaives man. coming in on top of that. I mean that's pretty that's harsh. I think he could have. Uh, Cubie's now pushing with his um, beam laser. Yeah, well, Cubie was already on route um, to push. It was just they were going for the expansion beforehand. Now, yeah, there's not much to be done. I mean, there are the Zeus and Rocco coming in, which will be of some use, but I think at this point, Magman coming in with their pyros, nothing to really stop them. The Zeus is going to try, but there are way too many pyros. I mean, you have to one-to-one -one Zeus to pyro, and that's not the case right now. Zeus is really strong against Pyros, but I mean, you can see it's kind of probably going to take it's, out you know at least one of them strong, in a huge pack, yes. but it's not enough. It is strong, but I've noticed that Zeus just does not have enough... It doesn't have Splash, so it can't deal with a group mm -hmm. of Pyros. You pretty much have to have a one-to-one -one ratio of Zeus to Pyro, and the Zeus will win. But Zeus... Just well, it, you, you can do with less than that. Ratio. Maybe it, it's just... Three to two? The, the problem is just... Yeah, well, there was, there was like a, a four times cost there, so <laughs> yeah, that's you're not going to win problem. on that. 
However, Cuba coming in the north side, which is actually not doing as well as the south side attack. Magman did a lot more damage there, but still... Magman and Cube really don't care about this. At this point, they're just going to want to build up, get more build power, get more metal, and then just secure the victory in round two. I mean, not round two, but like, attack again and go for the victory. Although, it looks like... No, Cube doing better than I thought. Those Glaze are actually getting in and likely to tear apart the factory. Going to tear apart the Weaver, going to tear apart the Caretaker, and the Rock was coming in. Basically, can't do anything. They can't attack enough. That factory's going down. And that's game. That is going to be game... One, actually. So, yeah, the wind counter is right. Even though I forgot to change it. The wind counter was prescient. <laughs> prescient wind counter. Yeah. Going with that. That was a really good um, uh, strategy. You can tell that um, QB knew from the start that he was going to make the warrior put it on that hill, run down the mountain, and, and blow up the base. Yeah. That, really, just perfectly executed. No... No obstructions, nothing got in the way, and the commander got in the way, unfortunately I missed that, but yeah. The commander got in the way, and that was it. And honestly, not much. Uh, Although, I, mean, I like, still think... Two warriors uh, is what needs a commander, not one. It's, so it's it's it, it was a good move, but it still could have been stopped, and it could have been scouted. It could have. It was even a jump commander, it could have been an LT up the hill. Which is... Yep. Yeah, I guess it really was more a matter of because mistakes in the opposite team. He had fleas over there, he, he, he saw it. So anyway, hopefully next game we'll have a bit better scouting. I mean, these players are not that far off from each other in skill. I don't think uh, Sutov was familiar enough with the map. I don't... If you don't know, uh, bots can walk over that hill. That's possible. That's Maybe that's why he went spiders, thinking that... Oh, well, I'll have that was, uh, yeah, that was a, There's it, only a couple impossible of to... Uh, bots. Well, spiders. Because he said, why? Yeah, so spiders are a common choice on that map, though, because of the hill, because they can easily rest in the hill, get over the hill, get everywhere in the hills. And. Yeah, I guess that doesn't really make sense. I mean, it does as much as it makes sense to get spider in general. But yeah. I think that it was just. Um, he was just distracted in the middle. He didn't expect it to be that bad. He could have jumped his commander away. He wasn't paying attention. And um, it was a good. Strategy. It was a good plan by QB, but um, it was also a failure to counter it. It's perfectly counterable, oh, but yeah. it's just a failure to correctly counter it. And those two things together just meant that you know those small gains that were made in the south of oh we snapped the pyros and we're doing all right. It, it doesn't matter when you lose a whole base. Well, I'm wondering if Magma and Kiwi were actually communicating about that, going oh hey, by the way, you throw your commander. Sorry, commander. You throw pyros at them. Get Yogstoth distracted, and I'll go around the backside and. Tear them apart, or tear them apart. I think it was. I think it was more opportunistic, where you could see that um, while that was happening, uh, Cube sat his warrior up there for a while. But as soon as that happened, that oh no, the things are stunned. Oh no, what are we going to do? You need to with venoms and fleas. You need to micro the fleas carefully to keep them out outside, outside the range of the stun of yeah, the venom. Definitely. That uh, he's paying attention to the middle. He's he's feeling great that he's he's killing these things. He's focused on that, and that's when Cube chooses to come in. Which I think. By the way, uh, we're deliberate. playing Tabula in two v two. Oh, nice. I haven't seen this happen in Another map I kind of wish we'd see more often. And the game... I think this is a very strong pick from uh, Skazi. Because of uh, QB's lack of macro. Yeah, it's... Hmm. Expect air. Expect plane starts from both players here, both sides here. Definitely. If they don't, I think... No. Uh, oh, yeah, they start one or the other I expect, to each other I expect plane and light vehicles. Like gunship and light vehicle for Magman Cube and plane light vehicle for Skazi Yog stuff. You you think gunship will work here on, on a map this large? Mm, I don't know if it'll work, but I'm pretty sure Cube is going to go. For, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if someone went for it. Although I could see just vehicle air in both cases because light I think vehicle the gunship is meta, a popular choice here. I, I think the gunship meta is still evolving a bit. Um, where people aren't completely sure whether it's viable on a large map and how small the map needs to be for the gunships to be large viable because they're a bit slower. But um, I think they definitely, definitely it's possible, but then I think planes are the safer pick, and I expect both players. I, I think it's quite possible, actually, that um, knowing QB, they'll go for gunship planes. I don't know I if Magman so. will be up for it. Yeah, I, I, I think it's possible. That they'll both go air and then switch out of it really fast because I QB could likes see going. that. Although my one concern would be that, I mean, think about it. Gunship and air, 
I think you're right. Magman might. I don't know if Magman would go for that. He might. I mean, they're up. They are up one zero. They they can do it if they want to do it. That was the time. But it looks like Cuba in the chat is talking about doing Floki into a rush, to a glaive rush over the hills. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what's gonna happen. That's the strategy. So no, it's going to be ground based. It might be Magman and Cuba both going ground. And I mean, if I know, if Yogg and Skazi watched Magman's that going for hover. Titan duel game. They Magman go and they pick this to map. start close to a max. Yep, Cuba going for Cloaky, Magman going for Hover. <laughs> go back into actual map view. And this is... Oh, boy. What do we have here for... Okay, Yogg is going for the more typical light vehicle, so Skazi is going to be doing the air start if anyone will. I think if they, if they watch the Titan Jewel game, they will definitely do an oh, air no, start versus they this aren't. expected to. Wow. Skazi is apparently going for... Although, Pre game got a little screwed up, but yeah. This might actually become a, a nice game with a lot of ground movement. Yeah, Skazi going for Cloaky. Oh no, Skazi is aborting. Or no, never mind, going for Cloaky to the north. Definitely going for Cloaky. Does want to do the Cloaky thing. See how all that works, because last time I casted a game on Tabula that I that was the same ten glaive rush, and that worked decently well. It's surprisingly powerful, actually. Anyway. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that happens. That um, because daggers are, are are really strong as well, um, just as already you know. Yeah, so I so I could see that dealing quite a lot of damage. So Cube going for it, going for the ten glaives, while Yogg's not goes for three darts, not no four darts, not surprising given the size, and Skazi at this point gets an early. Magma needs route. to walk so much for this first max. Yeah, really? that that positioning I'm not totally confident in. Uh, uh, doesn't make sense to me. I think were I think he's planning to put just two light laser towers in that gap and then expand backwards. And but it seems like a late game strategy that you do that if you you put down the laser towers and then you expand backwards and you go like now a huge macro expand. About the yeah, especially given that there are darts coming in, that darts can stop that first expansion so, or first metal extractor. So at this point, Magman without a non-commander source of metal. Now they need to start worrying because they don't see QB. He could have made a big gunship by now. They are worried, and the they dart don't. is going south. It's going to spot the glaives. No, it's not. The defender should stop oh, it in time. It's going to run into a defender. Yeah, that. Let's see. First shot. Oh, it doesn't go. There we go. Gets the line of sight and goes off in time. And this point, Skazi, Yagsatoth do not. They do not see the factory. Judging by their history, they were very close. But they did not see it. But Skazi is running straight to that base uh, along the route of the Cubis place. If he sees them in time, he can put down a couple of LTs and he'll be fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cubis doesn't even know about this at all. Right. Cubis is going to go right into that. That is exactly what's happening. The Glaives are moving in. And Skazi does spot it. There we go. That's a spot. And Skazi now moving back. Needs to regroup. Knows, some, knows that there's this big set of Glaives coming in. Only eight, though. Not the full ten. Didn't quite manage to get the full 10 in time. Cube. Uh, Skazi's playing. Yeah. He's, playing well. he's reacting and he might want to put down one LT or defender. Yeah, or what? Okay, at this point, Skazi pushing up a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure if Skazi realizes that Glaives can, in fact, go up this hill over in the southwest. Oh, Skazi knows that. Okay, well, in that case, they aren't acting like it. Magmat is doing the um, expand behind strategy. He got out of the constructor now and he's taking all the mexes behind. But that dart attack, because it was his only metal extractor, it's really slowed his down and he's, him down, and his economy is anemic. Oh wait, hold on. Ah, Skazi was even cleverer. Space building a Lotus just in time. Absolutely, well, not quite perfect timing, but definitely close. So yeah, Skazi's not prioritizing that LT close to those maxes. No, but that sh that will still get up just in time. Uh, QB needs to uh, walk up. He cannot uh, push into he that. He can't. It versus ballistic versus ballistic, no, you it's cannot not go up hill like that. Yeah, he, you lose too much range. Now it looks like Cube is instead going along to the center, trying to deal with that. But with the warriors in place and the glaives on top, just raining death down from above, it's going to be very difficult to do. There's still that one warrior... mace coming, but oh, the oh, glaives boy. regroup. They should be able to take out the warrior though, but unfortunately not doing so. In uh, fact, abandoning the strategy altogether. It looks like Cube is going to retreat, go to the center, so possibly try to go around we got back. A... Cube really delayed his constructor and his expansion for this. Uh, and the, um, another set of oh, eight, another another set of eight coming in. Wow. And Cube, if he loses those two, uh, 
Uh, conjurers. The ones in the south? Yep. Oh, in the northeast. Oh, yeah, that... That Scorcher there, one of the Conjurers uh, goes down, another Conjurer goes down, and that's both of the Conjurers he's got down. Away. He cloaked. Oh, but the mace he cloaked, and he could have walked away, but he started building another Melek track because he wasn't paying attention. Ah, but Yogstoth, okay, healing over to some revenge though, getting rid of Yogstoth's commander. So at least those Glaives did something, but still not very much. Yogstoth does not really care as much. At this point now, even with Magman and Cubay for metal, but really didn't make No, they're equal in income. Yeah, after losing the commander. Yeah, they were, they are ahead still. So yes. There's still Scorches in the back. Uh, those Scorches are killing those. Uh, yeah, those, that is, if anything wins the game, it's those Scorches. Are, oh, those Scorches are free reign. Totally free reign. This, Yogstoth needs to pay attention to the Scorcher in the back. I mean, I can tell they are a distracted by the, the west side of the base. But that Scorcher in the Here back. Here comes the mace, dude. That Scorcher in the dude, back. Oh, he moved it just in time. Yeah, just before the mace got there. But still, that Scorcher has free reign. The Lotus about to be built up, getting... Scorching can slow down, and that Lotus will be up in time. It'll be close. If you look at, uh, there's another attack in the south going on by uh, Skazi. There is, and Yogg South has a hidden Scorcher, Sleeper Scorcher up there, and that Scorcher over the northeast cannot go to the Lotus, did not rush the Lotus, unfortunately. And the Sleeper but, Scorcher uh, has Skazi to awaken. hit one uh, Glaive. If he would only morph it to a warrior, that would be awesome. <laughs> Wait, there's a... Glaive with experience? There's a Glaive in the very north, um, east. Oh yeah! That doesn't have enough experience though. That only has two. It can snipe out the- it could snipe out the winds, retreat back, yep. morph into a warrior, come back, kill the tower. I think that'll happen anyway. The war the worker's gonna come in there. The warrior might oh, not- Oh, Skaz, he's playing so well now. He's everywhere. He's around the bottom. However, yep. Cubay is going for another assault. This will not work, given that they're actually- You know what? It might! There's enough line of sight blockers with all these wind generators over to the southwest that I think that Cubay has a chance. Just one LT in the lower left corner. He needs more. Yeah, because that if, LT uh, is blocked by the wind gens so very much. I think Cubay's getting ripped apart. His base, he just lost most of his winds. Yeah, and that's not just losing all those winds. I mean, they just Cubay has had nothing really to work with other than mass yes, blades to deal energy, damage. That's all. Yes, yeah. they're almost in double income now. Um, but he still needs to take care of that attack in the lower corner. And wow, wait, Skazi does. See. Not, neither of them have neither of them have any energy. Neither Magman or Cubay have a single energy structure other than the commanders. No, and they are actually that's devastating. They are done for energy right now. And a tick is up here to try to stop the glaives. Oh, what? three glaives go down to a tick. Now Cubay trying to poke around, figure out where to go, and does not quite see the safe point yet. But is on the Ooh, right track, however. Oh, yeah, that was a perfect tick. All but one glaive out. That one glaive gonna try to do what it can. But at this point, skazi has got their glaives up in time. And that glaive not going for it. Okay, now it's going for it because Cubay needs to take that out. It's Cubay's only chance. They might lose a couple wins, but this is totally worth it. Oh. Yeah, Skazi didn't lose anything. This this didn't work. At all. The thing is, Cubay is just a one-trick pony, it seems. <laughs> Which is actually surprising, because Cubay has a massive range we've seen before, but... These team games, I don't know, maybe they haven't practiced much the team games? Because they've been practicing 1v1s for a while, but... It's a big macro map. It's uh, It plays a little bit differently to some of the other ones. Even a map like Titan Jewel is a typical 1 versus 1 map. Uh -huh. um, so playing at 10 versus 2 is, is sort of, you get a standard sort of size. A map like this, it's like, larger than Titan Jewel played as 2 versus yeah, 2. Yeah, this is not a sized. And that... That means high macro, which I guess QB must not know very well. I I don't know. I think it's just really being outplayed. I think he went for a sort of cheesy strategy, something like he did with the warrior before, where he, he but he did it with glaives this time, and it just didn't work out. He tried to go up the hill, and you can't do that with ballistic projectiles. Then he tried to go around the side, ran into the commander and the warrior. He got scattered out, and Magman went for a sort of expanding thing, but. It, it just hasn't worked for him at all. He lost his first metal extractor. Yeah. So neither no, have economy. One rushed, one failed their expand, so they're just falling behind. Yeah, and really the only wind generators were in a vulnerable spot, ultimately. On the other hand, Yoxitov could be way more active with his units. He's playing way too passive. Yeah, especially with he has such a big army of slashes there. He could be pushing. Yeah, that could be a leapfrog. That could easily be a leapfrog situation. I think they're trying to win on eco at this point and just try and stay safe. Which is oh, not the way to go. Cubay is rebuilding very quickly. Actually, they've matched they economy. The first game, Magman and Cubay have very close to matched economy with Skazi and Yoxitoth. Energy is the only real difference, but metal is pretty much parity at this point. And Magman, commander slightly threatened, but not by much. So this is actually evening out slightly. 
Cubay hasn't switched up their main build though. Still going heavy glaive, but it's eight thousand metal uh, in army against five metal in army. Guys, he's going to run into all these wind, wind generators to take it again. His, take it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One glaive coming oh. up here with no real. Def oh, never mind. Not the south. Yeah. Two glaives coming down here and no defenses whatsoever. Cubay once again going down in their economy. Almost. You can see the huge swathe of glaives coming in from Skazi, and now the um, slashes are pushing in as well. Yeah, that. I think this is going to be the match to end the game. I think we're going to go into one one into game three. And Magman switched to halberds, which were a really good counter to slashes, but there's too many glaives. Yeah. Heck, with this many slashes, I don't even know if the halberds make much of a difference. As soon as the halberds pull out, I mean, once once the halberds pull up their weapon, they're dead, and there's no. There are no support forces just for the halberd to be taking the damage for. There's one mace, that's it. What else is yeah, there? You need to enfilade. You, you need to go up the side and do it in a way such that only one slasher is firing at once. Yeah. And you can do it, but with raiders around, they just they just chase the halberd around shooting it the whole and, time. And, I mean, well, that's the thing, but also, like I said, the halberd can't attack. Like, it needs to be not attacking the entire time. No, it, it can it can easily go around the side and get into a position where only one slasher is firing because all the others are blocking it. Because slashers oh, always right, yeah, this yeah. Is yeah. Okay, having a enough. field day with the glaives. That's that yeah, is a good point. However, right. yeah, Magman about to lose their commander. That goes down, and with that, Cubay and Magman surrender. We're on to game three. Yeah. Such an attack no at start. It just didn't work out. No, nope, no error. The entire game. That was just. I think that was just Magman and Cubay just. <laughs> this just did not work. I don't know. You were right about saying that he picked too far forward. I was like, oh no, he's going to expand behind it and put down two laser towers. He didn't put down the laser towers. And that was the fail. He didn't I think expand that was sufficiently behind. That it. was the failing move, I think, because th that you need to turn off your factory if you're going to play like that. If you're going to expand in such a way where you don't start with metal extractors, you need to basically turn off your factory. And he didn't do that either. Yeah. And at least take a jump risky. commander to take. The closest max. Yeah, that's quicker. Oh, so many things about that make it risky. You gotta, because that is something. I mean, the one v one equivalent, of course, is you start near a base and then you go to the opposite corner and then you build back, which is similarly risky. Yeah, exactly. But building back. In that case, like, I mean, in that case, is a bit different because you have more time. By the time you've done that, you already have a decent raid force, and you're basically just doing it in order to make your opponent not know. Oh, by the way, I've got a whole other base over here. I've got twice as much metal as you think I do. It's more, mm. in this case, a matter of going for the defense first, trying to defend yeah, and consolidate for the raid. as far as possible. Yeah, especially with choke points like that, where you've you've got the middle and it is a choke point. And there are ways to get around, but most people it'll take a while to probe those ways. Mm -hmm. And by the time they've found the, the entrance in, you can put defenses up there. Yeah, especially in But I mean, way. in the end, Skazi was amazing with his raiding. He got around the sides. He always went, you know, he went up the, the ramp, and it was just he just he yeah, just it was, yeah. Also, QB did not. Uh, Make any defenders uh, this maxes. That I, he let Scarcy run around. No, freely. there was basically no static defense on the blue side. I think there was one Lotus, maybe two. Mm -hmm. That was about it. And Cubay was so was just attacking all the time. I think Cubay was just trying to keep Scarcy in their base by soft pressure. Like I'm going to attack you all the time. You have to pull your glaze back, otherwise you're going to die. And then Scarcy just said. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. And then I'll also attack you at the same time. Ooh, small like map that? again. Oh, yeah, Scotty we are on had scouts lands. on this thing. Oh, my god. He goodness. saw the movement. Well, this is going to be an interesting one. All right, well, Badlands is... Badlands is a map I'm kind of surprised to see in a 2v2 game, honestly. That's a 1v1 map. That's a hard 1v1 map in game three. It's a half free half map. It is cross positions, though, so... It's like an eight versus eight, which is like geyser, where you're going straight, you know, going, yeah. um, not going down. Starting locations are, uh, yeah, they, and there's a big obstacle in the center. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I suppose you could split it kind of lane-wise, as we were saying before, wait, that Shiba is in the way that a lot of team game players play. But, I, yeah, he this, this, that. This, this map's very much about taking the sides, so taking these two little... holes in the, in the, between the mountains on the, on the sides with the, with the, um, geothermal. Spots in them. Uh, yeah, it's over so here hard, in the south. So hard, so risky. In the but to get there, that, that period in time where you are trying to make the maxes there and you're sending constructors, you're so vulnerable. If your opponent yeah. doesn't and just makes units, it's very hard to get to the point. At least yeah, generally, I, I send my commanders to, to them and 
the one that the commander goes to, unless I'm fighting another enemy commander, in which case it's, you know, commander versus commander wars. You know, you're guaranteed to get it. And if you can sneak a single commander into them and reclaim the... There's 400 metal in rocks in those little areas as mm -hmm. well. So it, it's very strong to take them. But, I mean, again, the middle has more total metal extractors and the middle is very important. It's always very important. So you can't underestimate that either. Yeah. My guess... Okay, QB, there we go. There's the gunship plant. Finally, we he have gunship plant. Like Hamming over jump bots. He wants to win. Fighters for Yogg-Soth and Skazi going for shields. Skazi going quick on dirtbags. Fleas for Yogg-Soth, no surprise, but Magman... Oh, no. QB going for a brawler rush. That's the cheese. And Magman... It's a smaller map. I can fix, sort of forgive not want, not going planes because, I mean, they, they must expect them at some point. I can sort of forgive that. Where in the last map, I think if someone had gone planes, it would have been an easy win. But um, this is... A small no, I want to see sort of if they uh, save up metal to wait for a response. Well, at this point... Usually when you... Uh, in one to one games, when you suspect cheese... Um, are you uh, say, actually they are uh, don't spend Skazi, your last 100 200 metal Skazi is and not you wait until you know and then you can well Skazi has turned their factory off so at this point it looks like and the first thing you made was a dirt bag yeah so at this point Skazi is definitely suspicious and now moving their dirt bag in and they're gonna spot oh are they gonna spot it no they are not no. that is they missed. should really just in case it's so obvious did he he, he, he suspects I think yeah Skazi didn't spend. He has 300 metal in store now. Oh yeah, that's what I meant. There's fleas though. The fleas are going to see it. And now, switching over to Bandit. He can make a Razor Kiss as soon as he sees it. They can, but Bandit Switch, which... Oh, Vandals. Okay, there we go. Now the, ba the Brawler's been spotted by the fleas. Vandals are coming up. And Tarantulas as well for yogg So there's definitely a response coming up here. And a second Brawler on top of that with Pyros coming in as follow. So Magman will be able to punish this somewhat, but... Not very much if the Venoms go down. This is the big thing. These two Venoms here. Because those Venoms are basically the counter for that Pyro. And that is going to be... That's going to kind of be it. With all the Tarantulas and Vandals and the Razor coming up. Unless the Venom... Venoms are interspersed with the army. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is so nice of uh, Skazi because he quit AA now. He just made three, uh, three Vandals. Uh... And he continues with uh, regular ground force. Oh yeah, Google Frog, sorry, I didn't... Uh, that Brawler uh, didn't do anything yet this game. He only, only forced a uh, Razor Kiss. It didn't slow down expansion. So I think this is a good situation for Skazi. It definitely is. It's no overreaction. Oh, by the way, Floris, your mic's a little low. But anyway... Oh, excuse. That's fine. Okay, so, yeah, given that though, Magman still trying to get for a reclaim, just to even things out a bit. And pushing more Pyros, like I said, they can get rid of those Venoms. Although at this point, I don't know if that's going to happen. I think that, yeah, Flea and Bandit is what's happening. So Skazi and Yagstoth are confident in their ability to stop the air at this point. And so <laughs> they should be, actually. Those Vandals are doing a pretty good job. Still some harassment along the, the center to stop it. The problematic, uh, but the Venoms no, are, it's not. It's, the other it's not problematic at all, because those Venoms are still alive. Yeah. In fact, that... Oh, well, the Brawler are going for it and taking out one of the Venoms, but a bit too late. Second Venom does survive, no problem, but the first Venom does go down. The Brawler is dead. Yeah. Bit of shame, that. Oh, <laughs> the mech lives. That was not even a equal cost. I mean, he, it, it went down to three Vandals because it was not shooting at the Vandals themselves. Even though There's they did one. build more than the Brawler cost in AA, it, it ended up dying to less than cost in AA, so... Yeah, this is Here comes another brawler coming in. So the vandals that have survived are going to be useful, and then of course the, the, the venom. Well, if that venom is dead, then the powers can come in. The, but the venom is the not. Magman's commander is a real problem. He's, he can plop down more defenders from here on. Who can sir? Magman. And that's uh, Magman's commander in the center. He can make yeah a lot of defenders from and here. And actually, that and both those no, labs are not particularly. The flea is uh, down. The flea is down. Those pyros have free <laughs> reign. This is going to be. Okay, so another flea is coming bandits, in here. But bandits still, are very good. They are, but at the same time, that can hear the and Not okay, okay, and the brawler Why isn't that the uh, well. shooting? Brawler taking out Yogg-Soth's commander, and of course, Magman holding the center. Yogg-Soth, sorry. Oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, Yogg-Soth's commander goes down. Kyubei has the southeast pretty solidly. Skazi's not even trying to contest it at this point. And Kyubei, Kyubei and Magman well ahead in economy. 
fairly ahead on army as well, and Skaz is the only one with an army at this point. Yogstoth does have the Venoms, but too many powers coming in. However, the Bandits should be able to stop that. Nope, with yeah, they the are. Venom, that's that's it. Easily. So that Pyro attack was slowed, was completely stopped. Lost com I think they should take a cue from, from the other game and make a Racketeer versus the Brawler because it, it can completely stop the Brawler from attacking whatsoever. They don't even need AA, they can just stop the Brawler. And then if they ever try to comp push, it's even good against Pyros because Pyros are relatively high weight. Yeah, and if that, I mean, yeah, Racketeer would definitely win it. It's just, I'd say it generally is good against Jump Bots for that very reason. But yeah, it's, and actually Gunship, well, yeah, Gunship and Jump Bot, it would shut the entire thing down. However, yep. I don't see that happening. Bandit, Spam, and s Crab. Interesting. So I guess Yogstat's just trying to stop the Pyros by basically keeping them busy oh. for as long as possible. They don't have economy. They're behind. You cannot start a big project. Well, okay. I'm trying to give the benefit of the doubt here, despite the fact that it's going to take 15 minutes to get done. <laughs> well, 5 to 15 minutes, somewhere in that range, depending on how their economy is going, which isn't very good. They need to expand. They need, they really to. need to. He tried Actually, it with his commander. It died. They need to expand, yes, but they also... Well, I guess they're not... Well, they kind of need to rebuild a bit. I mean, there's a lot of reclaim here, finished. too. There's actually... There's enough reclaim here that the crab would be... Well, half paid for. Just from reclaim. Cubo's finished his geothermal power plant. And he's solidly taken the spot. He's made a caretaker, which is going to repair the brawlers. And can also assist in any building of defensive st structures, which is what he's factories. doing now. <laughs> but yeah, or proxy factories since switch, he can switch to land. The ground switch right here would be great in the southeast. That would work out wonderfully. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's going for cloak bots. Yeah, so once... Yeah, there we go. There's the cloak bot factory. And then after that, all these vandals... Oh, the middle of the vandals are doing a number on the brawlers. But yeah, there's going to be on this side. Like, okay, well, this is where the air is coming from. This is the air is coming from. Oh, by the way. Hi. Here are glaives. Prepare to die. So we got for you. Yeah. It's a fresh serving of glaives. The, the vandals are... He only has uh, the cost of a single brawler in Vandals, and they're really beating him away. Oh. So if they can get along that ridge of the mountain. The Vandals are going to spot are going to spot this, and well, that is there we go. That's spotted. So Skazi well aware of that Kalukabot factory. 15 seconds before it comes up, the brawlers still not that harmed though. You really want a comm set station now, so to keep uh, get line of sight on the brawlers. I think that um. It's it's they need to get over the just under the ridge of the mountain where the um and then put them on stand ground where the laser towers can't hit them, but yeah. they can still fire. Uh, but he 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 sees the laser towers. He thinks he can't go in, so he could just sit That's there true. and bombard the brawlers and stop them from preparing. But unfortunately, he's no, it's not back. worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah, in the center, some small skirmishes. I don't nothing, see but... any way for them to come back. I think at this point, I think you're right by the racketeer comment. They're clearly not stream sniping though, and going for thug instead. <laughs> I, really, I think what they're trying to do is just try to get all these units that can take shots, just to stop damage from really coming in and dealing with them for a while. Like crab, thug. Okay, thug's not that great for that, but going for thug law as well. Like, I don't know. Those pirates are gonna outpace everything. The bandits are doing okay, but venom's coming in. Still, Bandit venom's very strong versus pyros, but having to spend all that money on it anti-air. Yeah. And the problem is it kept them in their base and now they've totally lost the That economy. is the point, indeed. And that's worked out very well. And for that matter, Vandal's coming in the center. Will, actually, oh, will they get rid of that brawler? Yeah, that brawler is, oh, just, just barely, no, goes down. That brawler goes down. Second brawler about to go down as well. So the Vandal's at least able to go to the brawlers, but I think at this point, Magma and Cube could not care less. Zeus is coming in for Cube and that's going to help with the Pyros. The crab. No, sorry, the Pyros are on their side. So yeah, there's not much to be done here. It won't really help with the thugs too much, but honestly, what does it matter? The crab just being, well, it's keeping the Pyro busy, but the rest of them don't care. So that entire tactic, if that's the tactic, didn't even work. And that Venom, last Ooh. stand of the Venom, and wonderful, uh -huh. wonderful stun out there. That did Everything that needed to be done. Stopping the powers coming in there. <laughs> immediately. Yeah, the game might go on for another minute. I think that it's all up to the crab now. The crab needs to force down the middle, destroy Magman's commander, and take some territory. And if it can't do that, then 
the, the crab it. thing, it can sit still, it's got and spotter. the brawlers won't be able to hurt it. There are no and brawlers. as long as he can do that. He stopped making them, yeah, you're right. That, there haven't been any brawlers for the last three seconds. No, there are Zeus's to stop. There are Zeus's to stop. Well, the crab should be able to deal with that, it's just the problem, the pyros... Oh boy, that's another free dead pyros. Yeah, right out of the sky, too. That always looks so cool. But... Zeus's are actually really good against um, a thug ball because their stun does full, not not full damage, but it does actual physical damage to shields. Yeah, which exactly. I was, I was saying that that thug law ball, not the way to go, unfortunately. Not versus Zeus. Nope. So the takeaway from this is that racketeers are awesome, and you should always consider whether or not you should use them in a game because they're probably awesome and what you need. No, they're definitely. I think awesome. it was would be a good a good choice. I think what going oh. the way they did, they actually didn't build as much AA as um they were cost in brawlers. So no, they weren't doing that badly. The AA had value. And they were killing brawlers, but they didn't move out. That's the thing. They allowed themselves yeah, to be contained. Yeah, because the AA had exactly. I think if the AA, it would have had like two to one value or something like that to get close. On top of brawler, then drops into Skazi Noxos territory so they can then reclaim it, because otherwise there's not much to work with. I think losing the commander on the left, whereas Q, the 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 bottom bottom right hand side, it, it was taken quite easily and held, and a geothermal power plant even went up. Whereas the baller killed the commander on the left. The, the, the commander, I saw it out there, and I'm like, the, you better build a razor's kiss the first thing, otherwise you are dead. And well, no first razor's kiss. So yeah, he needed some mobile AA support at least. Magman and Cubay certainly know their map choices, that's for sure. Small maps good, large maps bad. Anyway, that <laughs> is going to, that's the first semifinals. The second semifinals is going to be Google Frog and Aquanim versus Flipstip and Lowry. And... Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Flipstip. Flipstip. <laughs> we'll get to that. Turn my win counter back to default. And we'll be back with that as soon as it starts up, which I don't think will be that long now. Uh, whoops. This is... Alright, so yeah, they're not starting too quickly. So we'll be back in just a sec. Stay tuned, everyone. <laughs> 